So, what's good, TMG fam? It's your boy L, and I'm back with another reaction. How y'all feel? Welcome back to the channel. Salute. So, I'm hyped about this video because we actually get to hear from a real live scientist, bro. You know what I mean? The video isn't live, of course, it's a video, but just to hear from a live scientist speak about the telescope that we've been checking out so many videos about, man, is is just super dope to me. I'm super hyped about that. So this video is titled NASA Scientist. That's right, NASA Scientist. <laughs> Explains why images from the new telescope astounded him. All right. So if you if I know sometimes I think of them like you think of scientists kind of like robots, man, that they don't have no feelings. They just go throughout their day discovering and doing different things. But no, they actually get excited behind this stuff, man. You know, what I mean, that's what they do it for. That's what keeps them going each day. New discoveries. So to hear this type of stuff is going to be interesting. Shout out to CNN for the video. All right. And we're going to check it out. If you're new, hit that subscribe button. Join the family. And right, here we go. Space as you've never seen it before. After a quarter century in development on Earth, the world's most powerful space telescope is now in orbit in space, about a million miles. Wait, wait, wait. How long? That's how long they were working. They was working on that before it went up. I did not know that. I never heard anybody give that information. Of how long? World's most powerful. After a quarter century in development on Earth, century. the world's most powerful wow. space telescope is now in orbit in space, about a million miles away. And this summer, it released its stunning first images. The James Webb Space Telescope is an extraordinary scientific achievement built to see parts of space and time previously unseen, like this image of a galaxy cluster as it appeared 4.6 billion years ago. And the expectation is that the web will be able to look even further back in time to the early universe and the formation of its first stars and galaxies. Mike Manzel is the lead mission systems engineer at NASA for the Webb Space Telescope. Don't Brad just look like <laughs> like anything? He like he could be a professor at a at a university. He just looks. You, you ever meet somebody? He's just like he's smart. That person's smart. This is what you get when you look at this guy. You like. He, he knows some stuff. That is the lead mission systems engineer at NASA for the Webb Space Telescope. He joins me now. Mike, thank you. Let me first just ask your, your reaction to these images as somebody who's worked so hard and for so long on this. What are you seeing and what does it make you, you know, is this better than you expected? Pretty much the same. What's your reaction? <laughs> Well, uh, uh, the reaction of myself and all my colleagues was of sheer joyful amazement. Um, you know, the images that you see are, are, are great, but the amount Look of detail that. that's in these images astounded us. Are there any images in particular you, you want to direct our attention to? Yeah, it's the one, the, uh, the galaxy uh, cluster that you had talked about. It's uh, a galaxy cluster about four billion light years away. And uh, that image, the, the thing that made us uh, almost giddy when we saw it, the image actually contains galaxies in it that are farther away than Hubble imaged. But uh, at first reaction, you can look at that image and think to yourself, well, it looks similar to Hubble. But the Hubble picture, the Hubble... Uh, no, it don't. That looked like the difference between uh, big back TVs and flat screen TVs. It looked like, remember the old black and white your grandmom had? Huh? That's the difference between that, that and plasma, right? This looks like the difference between 1080p and 4K. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? This is two different things you're looking at. Well, it looks similar to Hubble. But the Hubble picture, the Hubble uh, took 10 to 15 days to get that image. We did it in 12 hours. Mm. So this was a taste of things to come. And when we saw that image, we all kind of, you know, we, we were literally, as I said, giddy. We designed this telescope to see the very first galaxies that turned on in the universe. And when we saw what it did in only 12 hours, we knew in our hearts that whatever's out there, we're going to see it. So when I think about this as a... Gets me hype, bro. I know today is football Saturday. I hate to timestamp my videos like that, but 
ah, today is football Saturday, bro. And that just got me hyped. Like I'm ready to run in the game because whatever's out there, we're going to see it. You know what I'm saying? That just, that just does something to me. We knew in our hearts that whatever's out there, we're going to see it. So when I think about this as a layman, what strikes me as extraordinary about this, this telescope is on the one side, it faces the sun and has this extra, I mean, the heat that it's facing is extraordinary. On the other side, it's facing cold temperatures like you can't imagine. Describe how, how that works. The sun shield blocks out the, uh, the sun and lets the cold side passively cool down to almost the temperature of cold space to uh, the temperature of the telescope. The three metric tons of that telescope has to get down to about 55 degrees Kelvin, which is about minus 361 degrees Fahrenheit. It has to do that because we're looking at infrared wavelengths. Anything that has a temperature like our bodies, like ambient temperature, would glow in the infrared. So. We don't want the telescope glowing brighter than these images that it's looking at. So that big tennis court sized sun shield that we have keeps us in the shade and allows us to cool. And I've told people if that sun shield were suntan lotion, you would say it had an SPF of about 10 million. Wow. <laughs> and, and when you think about what, what this uh, will help us learn, what, you know, well, how should we think about what, it, what a telescope like this teaches us. I mean, you know, and again, I hear it as layman, I think, so are we going to learn a lot more about the Big Bang because we're going back so far in time? Yes. Well, yes. It, 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 it could potentially tell us uh, some of the conditions in the early universe that could make some inferences as to the Big Bang, but it will certainly tell us uh, what the early universe was like, how that early universe fostered galaxy formation. And the other big question that, that Webb is fully capable of, of answering is uh, looking for planets around other stars, exoplanets, that may have bio, uh, signs of biomarkers, signs of uh, elements or compounds that either are produced by life or nece necessary for life. So when you think of... Now, that just sums up everything we've been talking about in all those videos, what this telescope can do, the potential of this telescope, what it can find, the galaxies and exoplanets and, and different things like that, that it can reach back and tell us. And also, bro, possibility of seeing if life could be out there. You know what I mean? So that just continues to get me hyped and to hear it actually come from a real life scientist mouth you know what I mean? It's one thing to hear people do research and tell you about it, but somebody who's actually worked on it and can break it, break it down, tell you why it was designed the way it was designed, why when it's facing the sun, we have to have this here. And then when it's facing the cold side, why we need this here to balance out the temperature and everything like that, like to hear it come from his mouth, it's just that stamp. You know what I mean? Not saying those other videos weren't, but it just gives that extra stamp for me. It may have bio, uh, signs of biomarkers, signs of uh, elements or compounds that either are produced by life or nece necessary for life. So when you think about it, it's, as, it's possibly, you know, addressing two of the most fundamental questions in astronomy. How did it all begin? And are, are we alone? So when I think of it up there, a million miles away, I, I guess I have two questions. One, um, what happens if something goes wrong? Um, and I, what happens if you run out of gas or, or fuel or energy or whatever it is that's powering it? Well, first, let me answer the, the last question. That, that laugh that <laughs> was like, <laughs> you don't know nothing, mere mortal. Mere human, you you know nothing. <laughs> but nah, let me give it to the dude though. He's been asking some great questions. He's actually actually the perfect questions. He's answering all my stuff. So whatever it is that's powering it. <laughs> well, first let me answer the the last question because that's the easiest. We had designed the telescope to be good to have enough fuel propellant for ten years. Well, as it is, uh, because Arian put us on such a perfect trajectory. And because we made some of our early maneuvers right on time, we have well over 20 years of propellant. So Ooh. propellant is not our problem there. And when it comes to what could go wrong, well, anything can go wrong in space. And, and we designed contingency procedures for that. 
but most of us believed, most of us were fairly certain that uh, the biggest risks that we faced were in the early days of the deploying, the unfolding. And that went so smoothly and so great that most of us feel, hey, most of our major risks are behind us right now. We have a, a fully operational world asset for astronomy. So when I look at something like this, uh, Mike, it does seem to me you, you and your colleagues play a very special role. There's so much bad news out there. There's so much that people worry about. Mm -hmm. And then here you come along with this astonishing scientific and technological achievement. It's a sign of what the American government, when it puts its mind to it, can do really well. But it's also a sign of real international cooperation, right? Because this is not just an American venture. Absolutely. This is an international collaboration involving the Canadian and European space agencies, various universities. And it, as you said, it does show when we can work collegially what we can do together. And uh, now that's something I didn't know who all was involved. Y'all knew that? I sure didn't know who all was involved. But now to know that, that's, that makes it even that much more special. You know what I mean? Said it does show when we can work collegially what we can do together. And uh, over the course of, you know, 25 years, myself, a lot of my foreign partners, we became like families. So we ended up squabbling, but we, uh, I was always squabbling with someone who I knew was as dedicated to the success of this mission as I was. Hey, family squabble, bro. That's what we do as family. We squabble. And uh, we got through it all together, and, well, you can see the results. Well, I have to tell you, this is the kind of thing that leaves me always uh, amazed and uh, in awe, uh, but also very grateful. Grateful for all the work you guys have done. So thank you, and it's been a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you, sir. Listen, man, how it all started, and are we alone? I think that's how I'm going to start addressing each video, bro, because... Those are, those are the two main questions. How it all started. Is the Big Bang Theory, is it true? Is it false? Do we know? How it all started. And then are we alone? You know what I mean? And when you see a photo like they showed in the beginning of what the James Webb sent back, sort of like the Hubble, but it makes you, you once you see all of that in that photo, I think the percentage of us being alone is very, very small, bro. <laughs> very, very small. I think the chances of us not being alone, great, great. So, I don't know, man. Y'all get at me in the comment section. Let me know what you think, you know? Here, how do you feel about hearing it from the actual scientists that worked on it? Did you know that they had been working on it for uh, a quarter century before that thing went out? into space you know great information so, and like i said salute to the guy who was uh interviewing him he asked really really good questions you know what i mean but y'all get at me in the comment section man let me know what you think and um yeah stick around and stay tuned bro till next one i'm gone peace